Hello and welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Justin Chenette, and today's show we're talking about civic engagement. This is a topic that I really believe in. It's something that back in high school, I know it seems like just yesterday, but back in 2009 uh, was something that I really believed in then, trying to engage my fellow peers to, to get more involved in the community, trying to get them excited to register to vote. Um, I'll tell you a quick story before we get into the show. Um, you know, when I turned 18, I was so excited to register to vote. It was one of those things where I was like counting down, like before the cake, and cake's really important to me, um, I really wanted to register to vote. And so literally, as soon as I woke up that morning when I turned 18, I went down to City Hall and registered. And that was something I felt like was a civic responsibility, a civic duty. Um, and I felt a part of something much larger than myself at that point. I felt like I can actually contribute to the conversation more because now I have the power of filling in the bubble, right? Not the SAT bubble, that's a whole other ball of wax, but the, the ability to really back up what my statements are saying, back up my opinions, back up you know, what, I'm, what I believe in with choosing people that represent similar viewpoints. Um, and at 18, not everyone thinks that way. And, and, and getting our society, getting our culture to really embrace that has always really been a challenge. I mean, when we have more young people that are super excited to vote in, you know, the American Idol or The Voice or the upteenth, you know, singing show, you know, then actually voting in the next election cycle, that's a problem that we face. And that's not going to be solved by one bill or one law. It's really going to take society to make some, some fundamental changes about what do we really care about? Um, and, and how can we engage and empower young people to care? Um, and, and that, to me, is a real critical piece. Um, and it's something that, as a legislator and as somebody who runs a nonprofit organization and, and a number of other activities, I'm really committed to. But it, it, it's going to take more than one person to do it. And, and something that I was really thinking about, I was presenting the eighth grade citizenship award for Saco Middle School at Thornton Academy. And they were, you know, graduating to high school. And it was really neat to see, you know, all the kids, uh, you know, coming out and getting excited to, to move on to their next chapter. And, and one of the things that I, I noticed is, you know, reading off, you know, a couple of the names that not only were getting awards uh, for citizenship, but also, you know, their qualifications and some of the things that they cared about, it was just neat to see that next generation, you know, getting involved. And, and while it was just maybe a handful that were getting the awards, you know, I'm really optimistic that the next generation of kids are really going to care. And we're seeing study after study where actually young people are wanting to and choosing career paths and jobs specifically in reference to the amount of social responsibility. So you're seeing a lot more corporate uh, social responsibility being infused um, in our um, economy, where corporations, like you were seeing Starbucks, for instance, moving forward on post-secondary education. Um, guns have been an, an issue for a number of businesses, like Starbucks and, and some others that are saying they don't want them in their facility. Um, and the same on the other side, Chick-fil-A had a big to do with LGBT rights, and the LGBT community was boycotting Chick-fil-A because of the statements of the CEO. And you're seeing where the power of the pocketbook, the power of the purse, the power of their wallet is actually changing corporations and how they act, how they carry themselves, and, and the causes that are pushing forward. And you're actually seeing that social responsibility element being infused in, in, in businesses. Um, and that's really encouraging for me to see. Uh, it, it can get a little sketchy when it gets involved in, in politics. But if we focus specifically on businesses getting involved in the community, businesses focusing on what can they do to help other people, not just make money, that's a good thing. And when young people are specifically searching for career paths and what they want to do for the rest of their lives, not based on their biggest paycheck, but based on their biggest contribution to society, their biggest impact to help other people in their lives, that's huge. Um, and, and I think we can't stress that enough how we need to amplify that in other sectors of our, not, our, not just our economy, but in our society and really trying to tap into that. Uh, and getting people registered to vote, getting people 
to volunteer at local soup kitchens and different things like that because it can be fun. You know, community service can get a bad rap, right? Community service, oh, you know, put on the, the orange jacket by the side of the road and, and, and have, you know, prisoners or, or people that, you know, committed crimes do things. No, it can be something that's fun and exciting based on your own passions. And, and it's kind of connecting the dots to what we're already seeing with young people choosing fields based on what they're interested in, what they're passionate about, what their social impact is. And now connecting that to a larger societal issue of voter registration and getting involved in community service projects. We can connect those dots. And, and, and that's something that I really sort of thought about while sitting and presenting some of the awards at this eighth grade citizenship award was like, we can do this. But it's really going to start at the school level. Um, and, 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 and early on, not later, you know, in high school, it, it's, it's really too late. We really need to start tapping into this energy and, and, and empower young kids to get involved. And, and how we do that is start to think about what are we teaching kids in our schools? And that's a big question, right? And we're seeing a lot of debate around the country, but even here in Maine, about what is the type of education that we really want our kids to learn? You know, do we have the best education system? Do we have the best model for education? Um, where there's going to be a huge debate. It's already really taking place around Common Core, uh, how we're getting rid of you know cursive and we're focusing even more on standardized testing. But if we replace that with something, what do you replace it with? And that's always the question. It's like you can. It's easy to say no to something, but it's harder to say, okay, what are we going to do? What do we need to start from scratch and really build up from there? Um, you know, are the classes that we're offering kids the things that they need to be learning for the real world, the challenges of the 21st century economy, like science and math and trying to get more kids interested in that. Um, you know, maybe obtaining college credits before they, they leave high school. Uh, doing more hands-on experiential learning. You know, maybe kids want to use their hands, and that's why the Biddeford Regional Technical Program is such a great program where, you know, Thornton kids can go over, you know, Biddeford kids can utilize it. You know, that's really important, but really focusing in on that. You know, there, there are trades that make a lot more money than I make, you know, so that, there's, a, there's a big market for that. And, and just making sure that kids know that there are multiple pathways and, and emphasizing those multiple pathways while you're going through school. So if you're interested in a particular topic, number one, figure out what you're interested in. That's always step number one. And then step number two is what classes can you take that specifically go into that track? And obviously, if everyone's interested in something different, it's hard to find, a, you know, do a track for each individual kid. But the closer that we can get to individualized education or, the, or at least personal education where we can have experiential learning, we can have hands-on experiences, that's the best. You know, most of my learning in school happened outside the classroom. It happened after school in extracurricular activities. Um, and it happened, you know, volunteering in the community, learning those soft skills like leadership, communication. Uh, those things, that, that's what businesses are looking for right now. You know, when, as a legislator, we toured the state. We did a little bus trip, which was kind of fun because you got Democrats and Republicans sitting on the same bus. Yes, that can happen. Um, and it was really neat. You know, we got to, you know, number one, it was good for, you know, really strong bipartisan work because it started off the session really well, right? You got to meet people for people. You got to know who their kids were, who, you know, who, what their community is like, you know, what their aspirations were. And, and you got to see not the person for their R or the D after their name, but actually like, wow, these people care. And, and my point of the story is on this bus tour, we went to different businesses, key corporations in the state of Maine that are really making a difference. We went to Skowhegan and, I, and we went to the, the, uh, the Nike shoe factory, the, um, the shoe factory that is there. Um, the New Balance factory. And it was really neat to see, right? We got to see actual shoes being made. And, and it's neat to actually see that that actually happens in our country still. Um, and so that was just one example. We went to a lot of other businesses. But one of the things that they kept saying, the reoccurring uh, theme from these, these business owners and business professionals is they just want people that have those soft skills. They, they want those kids that'll show up on time that want to work. And, and, and that work ethic is all that they're looking for. I mean, obviously, it's nice if you're even more skilled and you have the training, and, and that we can have a conversation about. But just those basic skill sets of caring, 
Remember what I said earlier about we want young people to care about their community? It's the same thing in the business world. We want young people to care about the work that they're doing. They could be doing something that you and I might think is menial, but it is critically important to the overall business structure. You know, whether you're mopping up the floors, whether you're working the cash register, every position's important, right? And, and it may be a short-term job, but you've got to care about that short-term job. We've all done those jobs that we may have not necessarily cared for, but it was a stepping stone to something bigger. And, and that caring element is so critically important to not just to business, but to your life. And getting young people to do that is a challenge, but we can do it. We can do that by infusing community service in the classroom. This leads to a great conversation about a bill that we passed this past session. It was my bill to infuse service learning in the classroom. It said basically high school teachers can grade community service projects as a high school graduation standard. Let me back that up in case you were falling asleep. You, teachers will now be able, if they choose to, it's up to, their, it's up to them to make this determination. Uh, based on what they're doing in their current curriculum, but teachers can now grade service projects in the community for a high school graduation standard. So for instance, in combination and it, with other grading tools, so tests, quizzes, performances, they can now do service projects. Um, and so people like me and others that learn in a more experiential way, in a hands-on way, can be graded for that. If you go to the soup kitchen to volunteer, you can be graded for that. Uh, and again, local control still dictates that it's up to the teacher, which is really nice too. At some point, I would love it to be a mandate. There are some schools that have a, a, a community service requirement, like Old Orchard Beach High School, for instance, 20 hour requirement, that's great. That needs to be the model across the state. Uh, because even though it's mandated, you, you get yourself out of your comfort zone. Because if somebody said in high school, I, now I didn't have a community service requirement, but I did, I think, like 500 plus hours in a year. Um, for community service because I was part of a program. But if, if somebody told me I had to do it, it would force me to get out of my comfort zone. If somebody said, well, you could if you wanted to, okay, I'm going to be concerned about the next dance. I'm going to be concerned about my homework maybe. I'm going to be concerned about college. But doing a service project may not be on my list of priorities because there might be a laundry list of things you want to do before you graduate. And uh, volunteering at the soup kitchen may or may not be on it. But if you're forced to do it, it maybe presents an opportunity to learn something you wouldn't have done otherwise. Uh, or if you infuse it in the classroom, it's less like a service project and more of a school project, right? So if you have a science class and you're learning about nature, right? You're learning about plants, not these fake ones. I really like them, though. Um, but you're learning, you're going out into the, uh, to a park, for instance, and you might clean it up. Right? And along the way, you come across some interesting wildlife, maybe. In Saco, we sometimes have that. Um, or maybe uh, you see a tree that's interesting, and you're like, well, what, what kind of tree is that? Um, so, and, and you're learning some things along the way, but the key is you're doing a project with your class. right? You're getting out of the classroom. You're cleaning a park, which is the service project. And then you're learning about whatever the curriculum-based project is from your science class. And, and, and I use that as an example because it's more visual. But you really can connect the dots to any other class as well. History, same thing. Go out to a, to a fort, for instance. And again, it may take some additional resources, but that takes investing in education. We're still not at the 55% level of education that was mandated by Maine voters in 2004. That is a problem. And every time I bring it up, any time other supporters of the 55% bring it up, you know, we get pushback in, from, from Augusta, individuals in Augusta that say, well, that's not the priority. Well, you know what? I'm telling you, if we don't make education the priority and really have substantive conversations and really invest in our kids, our futures will not be bright. I mean, let's break it down. That is the gateway to a future economy that's going to be successful. That's our gateway. That's our ticket to fixing our state's long-term economic engine. Education. And that's one of the many things. Uh, and it's so multifaceted. It's not just about throwing money, but it's utilizing that money in an effective way where you're doing, you're infusing different elements like service projects, like other things. So it's really important that we make that a priority. And it's something that I'm committed to. Uh, and it's something that when I founded the Saco Day Center for Civic Engagement, which is a, a main 501c3 nonprofit organization, it, we cover Saco, Biddeford, Old Orchard Beach right now. And our goal 
is to do just that, is to, to empower people to active citizenship and social responsibility in our area through service projects. We're partnering with schools and businesses and different organizations to empower not just young people, but everybody of any age to get involved, get more involved in the community. Because when you volunteer, you're going to be more apt to vote. When you volunteer, you're going to be more apt to care. When you care, you're going to be more apt to maybe you know, spruce up your lawn. You're going to be more apt to, to open the door for somebody at the bank or the post office. I love seeing your neighbor, you know, at the post office. You know, opening the door may seem like a small thing, but it might brighten up that person's day. It may set the positive tone for the rest of the day. And so everything has a ripple effect. All these ha are like a, a row of dominoes, right? And when you do that, it all has an effect. Every, every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. See, I did learn something in science class. Uh, quick shout out. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's really important that we infuse that. And so, you know, my nonprofit is aiming to do that. Others, Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions Club. You know, there's a lot of great organizations in our community. We just have to connect the dots. We just have to work more collaboratively together. You know, Biddeford has a great program with Heart of Biddeford doing great innovative things. Engine's doing great. Tammy Ackerman's organization. Quick shout out again. I'm doing a lot of shout outs. Um, you know, Saco Spirit is doing some things. You know, OOB 365 trying to make OOB a, a year round community through events and different things. You know, we have all these great organizations. And one thing that I've noticed is let's work collaboratively together on some key projects to really move the ball forward, to, to feel, to get people to feel more connected to their community. And as a result, they're going to be more apt to, to really be excited to get involved because it's really an exciting thing when you get to meet new people and you get to help others. Uh, it makes you feel good. It's almost like a selfish thing. Um, and when we infuse it in the classroom, we're, we're really setting up young people to a lifelong commitment to that active citizenship angle, which is really important. Um, to focusing on, you know, benefiting our economy, benefiting our communities, and benefiting our society as a whole and as a country. So it, I, I know I'm sort of getting big picture here, but that's where we have to start. You know, whether you're a little pebble or a big rock, whether you, you know, when you get tossed into the pond, it still makes an effect, right? So you have to start somewhere. If you can't lift the boulder to put into the pond, throw a little pebble because you're still having ripples, you know? So that's where we have to start. But if we don't keep moving the ball forward, we're never going to get there. And so that's why I think when we pass the My Community Service Bill unanimously, Democrats and Republicans, uh, and it was signed into law by a governor who can sometimes be very difficult, um, I think was a positive thing. It set a positive tone that, you know what, service projects and helping people can transcend party affiliation, can transcend your differences. It breaks down barriers because when you're focused on a service project, like for instance, uh, I think two years ago we were building a young school playground, for instance, uh, the elementary school in Saco, one of the elementary schools. And, and it was a little daunting, right, because I'm like, I'm not, I don't really work with my hands that often. So I'm like, how do we do this? But we had a team of people. And you know, our group was comprised of a lot of different conservatives, progressives, people from all different backgrounds, socioeconomic levels. And you know what? None of that mattered. It really didn't. All we cared about was what is our shared goal? Our shared goal is building the young school playground because we want to help those kids, right? So all those differences that are so superfluous just came right down. Those barriers brought, were brought down and we got it done, right? So we can have the big debates, we can, we can see our differences, but you know what? When we can bring people together through service, we can make our world a better place. We can make our communities a better place. And we can help the, the partisanship that gets so toxic now, not just in Augusta, but in DC. If we focus on what are we there for? What is our shared goal? Our shared goal is helping people. And if we remember that, we can actually put people first. Not politics, not all the superfluous stuff. And we can actually get down to brass tacks and get some, get some real issues solved. And together we can make that happen. So that's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the show. We're going to have much more coming your way. So I, I hope you enjoy. This has been Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Justin Chenette. If you want to follow uh, my career path and also get updates from me every step of the way with what's happening in Augusta, you can go to my website at justinchenette.com. You can friend me on Facebook, Twitter, all that social networking stuff. This has been Beyond the Headlines. Stay tuned and stay connected.